and should be working. Alright, so I've actually not played this game in in quite a while, so pretty casual, but I have a lot of very fond memories of watching Furious Paul among other people run this game and important to me to uh something to uh pay tribute to him. <laughs> hey Bamboo, well that may be a little difficult, but we'll see. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by that. And I'm planning to do the best I can as far as doing the game justice and kind of setting. Game has a really, really good soundtrack too. Now that I have the cross, which is basically the best weapon in the game, I'm trying to hit enemies and candles to uh, build up a shot multiplier, which is how you wreck uh, bosses and other required fights. Yeah, this, there was some really cool uh, comp chasing for the record, uh, especially back like when Paul was more active. Okay, I've gotten to do some commentary for this game for GDQ marathons over the years. Like there was a really hype four-way race, I want to say in 2015. Kind of all, all four different people that had all held the record uh, at various recent times. <laughs> Plenty of hearts for the boss here, so let's get the rest of the candles. Totally have it memorized as far as where the other sub weapons are, and I don't want to risk losing my cross. <laughs> hey, Gumshoe, thank you very much. Me yeah, I've heard good things about Animal Well, Metroidvania type game that came out recently. in one of these candles. Unlike in some later Castlevania games, uh, um, if you get a, di a if you get a different sub weapon in this one, lose whatever you currently have, which is very very bad. When we can do this, if we got the uh, press. Oops. In a real, in a real, I mean, this is very casual, but I'll maybe talk about what like real speedruns would be doing. Like you generally want in a real speedrun, you want to try to end each stage with uh, with zero hearts to speed up the uh, score countdown. Yeah, I don't know how to do the Triforce, sadly, which is something Paul always used to do, was uh, 
make arrange the crosses and do a triangle pattern when you when you collect the red orb to end the stage so that you're making a triforce basically crosses <laughs> I believe only Castlevania game to have eight directional whipping to list casually it makes this a somewhat easier game than any of the Castlevanias on the NES makes what your sub weapon is a lot less impactful <laughs> So I have this kind of limp wimp technique here. It does a lot it does way less damage than normal whip swings, but uh it's really weak enemies like these jerk birds here can be effective. Yeah, I saw that, that's really nice. as an eternal candle. <laughs> This stage is a little different too in that you don't actually lose your hearts at the end just because the boss Medusa is in the middle of the stage instead of the end. Say hi to Medusa. Say bye to Medusa. <laughs> hand can steal your hearts. And a, a real speedrun would be doing a bunch of damage boosts off of the enemies here too, just because when you're if you're getting knocked back by taking damage, you move a little faster than normal walking. <laughs> Dance this, I'm just gonna wait for the river to change directions before trying to jump over the spikes. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna be safe. faster when it's pushing against you. <laughs> Alright. Kind of a cool thing that was new to this game too, is having parts of the game take place outside of Dracula's castle. Well, maybe that's not really new, because Castlevania 3 was like that too, but this is in a lot of ways meant to be a remake of the first Castlevania game, but they had about half of the game taking place outside Dracula's castle and other parts of Transylvania. Got through a lot of a lot of different locales in uh, stage three. Some caves, then a waterfall, and then uh, sunken ruins. pretty obnoxious and more serious runs. They've got randomness with their movement patterns. Oh yeah, you can do this by the way too, as far as crawl walking. Yeah, Paul was a really cool guy. Just one of the most 
I always just found it ironic that he his internet name was Furious Paul, but he was just one of the most laid back, chill uh, streamers I ever uh, knew. Hey, Korean, welcome in. Speaking of chill, by the way, uh, the the music for Stage Three Two is just, just the most kind of unearthly chill themes on the whole Super Nintendo soundtrack. If you ask. Right here, it, there's a glitch you can do to actually skip the next couple of platforms. Well, yeah, like skip a pretty significant chunk of the platforming here by uh, jumping up and then whipping down and then using kind of some snapback physics the game has when you hit a whip ring, let you uh, kind of float up, uh, then jump out of it. Or a bit of time. No idea what the, how to do it exactly, so... I... Hey, backslash, thanks. Just gonna wait up here. Yeah, I I'm sure if this game had been made later, it would it would have less lag issues. <laughs> that that is something that's somewhat impactful in runs is managing lag, avoid killing certain enemies that have very laggy death animations. Afraid of bonking my head and dying there. Yeah, like that was a pretty big bit of lag there. As much as I like this game, one thing I will knock is that uh, the vertical climbing sections are kind of mean. Because when you, as you climb, the floor become the uh, floor becomes a death pit. Unfortunately, that's going to make uh, make the next bit harder. Try to get a crack pick. Kaizuku. This is going to be a little harder without uh, Ross, but at least with the axe I can go before. To hear some rarely heard parts of the boss theme, too.
Yeah, this was a this was this was a very very early Super Nintendo game. I don't know if it was technically a launch title, but it was close. Like ninety one, I think, is when this came out. Here to get press stage four. Yeah, yeah. I have to say hi to a, somebody very special in this stage. Stage uh, 4 actually has two bosses in it. Discriminate with my weapon to try. Oh no, I don't want that though. <laughs> Dagger is basically the worst sub weapon. Now we get to say hi to a uh, boss by the name of Poexel, which is where my internet name comes from. This boss attacks with its tongue and uh, Poexel is licks you up backwards. First boss is licks you up backwards or Poexel and then the uh, second boss is Tunnel Rock or Coronat. <laughs> Hey, Junker dude. I, if I was better prepared, I'd have the Persona 4 boss theme. I'll face myself. Uh, queued up to play there. Well, I think you, I think you'll all have to decide for yourself whether I'm the good or evil. <laughs> But stage 4 of Super Castlevania 4, in a lot of ways, I'd like to view as being kind of here to show off the powers of the Super Nintendo. Like, you have this rotating Mode 7 room here. A little bit of downtime in the run, but uh, Konami put this in here to show off the rotation effect, and then it gets, it, it gets better, well, quote-unquote better, coming up after this. At the rotating background. There's a because of the rotating background lag management is a pretty big deal in this room. Do you have this potion? You want to try to just walk through as many of the skeletons as possible. As the, um, Lag that the skeleton explosions generate is even worse against the background. So there's actually a, a ceiling zip that's possible in this screen, and it saves like about 10 seconds or so. I will, of course, not be doing it because it's frame perfect. Ah, but um, it's pretty cool. It was it was really cool to see when runners of the game started it just put in the work to be able to do it consistently too. Like I know there's two different versions of it now. There's a cross so. somewhere in this section of the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sunny delight to like especially the uh the, the mode 7 effect for getting into battle in Final Fantasy 4 and 6, the first time I saw that, that, uh, would be... Oof, that was crushed there. 
Hey, Von Yvonne. Yeah, likewise. Looking forward to it. Oh, okay. That's fine. I actually remember the layout of this place that great. get hits with the cross against candles and enemies in order to uh, get the triple shot again. Yeah, uh, yeah, I hear you there. I've got a fair bit of work I need to do too with the, uh, with the schedule and the tracker. Or not to ton of rock backwards. <laughs> and some more, like I said, the, the whole point of this stage is to show off the powers of the Super Nintendo and the fact that Coronach shrinks uh, damage to him is uh, it's part of that. If you get lucky, I don't, I don't even know really how to do it properly, but if you get lucky with where the floaty platforms are at the end of the Coronat fight, it's actually possible to grab the orb before it falls. And time. All right, then stage five is uh, is a kind of a different kind of stage where I like to kind of say that the boss is the time limit because there's no there's no boss in the stage and it's fairly short but you have a pretty short time limit compared to uh, compared to all the other stages in the game. They despawn the enemy. Stage before we actually enter Dracula's castle. Yeah, yeah, Junker Dave, if your main, if your main experience with uh, the game is speedruns, it's, it's very easy to forget. But yeah, I just think it's even. But I mean, it's not really that hard to beat the time limit, even taking your time. But uh, you can't really, you can't sleep on it either. <laughs> I, forget, I actually forget if the time limit resets uh, once you do the screen transition here. Doesn't, okay. In a bit of a time crunch. But yeah, stage 5 is, I think, the shortest stage in the game. <laughs> Kind of a cool idea from Konami to have a stage where you're racing the clock, but not really like not in like an auto scroller type sense. Last entered Dracula's castle. Yeah, the soundtrack to this game is so, so good. Part of why I love watching speedruns of it. And also don't really mind that much when people reset a lot, too, just because stage one is some of the best music in the game. Yeah, yeah, more bloody tears is always good. 
We resist the temptation to hold left here because it is very, very easy to just hold left and then fall and die in the chandelier room here. Some more showing off of mode 7. Getting through this room in the minimum possible number of cycles of the chandeliers I know is pretty much the most difficult platforming challenge in the game. I remember watching Furious Fall grind the crap out of this. Like hours and hours of chandelier practice. It's taking my time here and waiting for the swings, but... Each swing of these chandeliers is about four and a half seconds, I want to say, so it adds up if you take your time. Speedrun time. If you, yeah, if you do die to the chandeliers, though, it's it's kind of a punishing. Ooh, I wasn't even expecting that to be there. But it's a pretty punishing death because you get sent back to the start of six one, but. Uh, um, Really? Ah, of course, I had to do that after getting the uh, opening up the secret room too. Because yeah, the backup basically, if you die in the chandeliers, is to go into that secret staircase down there, which takes you to a hidden room where you can get any possible sub weapon. Use that to get a in a double shot pretty fast. <laughs> Ectoplasms are kind of neat as far as the color. I know there's a cross in stage 8. I don't know if there's one in stage 7. So 11 stages in this game, although stages 10 and 11 or A and B instead of 10 and 11. Character limits, I guess. Since I'm playing the Japanese version, the, cro the coffins there actually have crosses on them. Uh, there aren't really any meaningful gameplay differences between the Japanese and international versions, but the, uh, at least the US version had some censorship. I do have a card of both versions, but I, I've come to like the Japanese version better just because it's, uh, it's uncensored. I think the whip has a slightly different sound effect between these two. Hands grab you and just do that to get out of it, though, if you know what to do. Kind of cool, difficult looking damage boost tech to get past the coffin ring here without actually fighting them. This, this whole room in a more serious run is fairly intense, because you, you take a lot of intentional damage to get past slow enemies without fighting them. You have these kind of randomly spawning ghost dancers. Some 
sweet. Konami loved their puns. The boss here is Paula Abdul and Fred Asker. And they're... <laughs> well, well, I mean, something can be inspired by multiple sources, though, right? Hey, Tipo. Yeah, sadly, you missed uh, my Persona 4 moment earlier. <laughs> Really hard to underestimate, to understate just how powerful the eight-way whip swinging is. Or do the NES Castlevania games. I think there's a cross in here, but I'll look for one anyway. Limp whip technique here, which does very piddly damage, but uh, kind of stun lock uh, enemies with it too. Yeah, I, I only played Bloodlines for the first time a few years ago when the Castlevania Modern Collection came out, and I very quickly became a fan. Oh, hey, there we go. And hits uh, with us to get my uh, triple shot. Well, to get first a double and then shot. Dying. Oh, I guess nowhere, basically. Yeah, Bloodlines has never been a particularly popular or competitive speed game, sadly. It's kind of neat how it's pretty different from, like, this game, too. It's a lot more about uh, optimized boss kills than damage boosting. It'd probably be obvious getting through that room fast is a lot harder. Hey, Tranquilite, yeah, that was about three stages ago, but, uh... Poexel one. I'll let you decide which one. Here. The instruction manual called these pictures here Portraits of Dracula's Mother. And it is Mother's Day for another 50 minutes where I am, so I guess that's fitting. Ah. snake here that's sole purpose so that seems to be to just create lots of lag. <laughs> here you do actually have to duck to avoid getting pushed into the spikes by the uh, bug critter there. Yeah, that's that's a fairly old picture at this point too, because I know it has my like it has an old headset that I haven't used for uh, 
better part of a decade at this point on it, but I, I, I view that as total flattery <laughs> that he has a picture of B for uh, Wexel. Sir Brakel. Who gets disposed of very easily if you have the uh, triple cross. I, I, I was really glad to see Joe start running this game again, too. He was one of the uh, people that really pushed this game to its limits, along with Paul and some other people. That's a toughie, actually. I would probably say the cross in this game, because uh, because it's useful for more than just killing bosses or 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 stationary enemies in general. Please stand up there. This is, this is the stage where it's the most obvious which version of the game you're playing to, just because the uh, US version has green slime instead of mud. I don't even know if it's if it's kind of indisputably blood, at least on at least the liquid stuff. Not not the blood that's on the spike platforms here, but it uh, looks like it could be blood. Stage 8 is very notorious too because it's because of how many one unhit deaths there can be here. Fortunately the red the red slime or blood, whatever it is, just does damage to you and you can jump out of it, it's not its own death. <laughs> Find the second bone dragon by waiting a little bit for the uh, for the blood droplets to uh, as a sprite overload or something. Timing for it. It's part of this There is a die for something. To... 
Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of why the Bloodlines run is so different, is that uh, taking damage takes away your uh, web or spear upgrade. Yeah, here would be Vegas Bridge. It's random. It's a very, very easy place to die if you're going fast. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster. Hard. Cross at least. Even without the cross, I don't think he's that hard to, because you can uh, you can destroy his potion bottles as he throws them before they do anything. <laughs> oh yuck, that sounds awful, tranquilate. Nine. One of the cooler stages in the game, if you ask me to. Treasury. This is where Simon faces the challenge of actually con actually continuing to try to fight Dracula versus just taking the money and running. Fun little Easter egg here too, where if you jump onto one of the treasure chests a lot, like a hundred or two hundred times or something very high like that, uh, you'll get meat. Oh, no! Hey, Battle X. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be. I'm sure I'll get back to that eventually. No idea when, but uh, beloved game of mine, and they're playing it. part of dying one without a death. Oh! Well, there's a secret room. Stopwatch there. Magnetic rocks or whatever they are, and sucking into the hidden room. Pretty much every candle has money spawns. That watch isn't useless to these dragons. I 
rather have my cross, but... Not a horrible place to have a stopwatch. Zap bat, who uh, <coughs> doesn't really do a whole lot at the first start other than just fall apart and do damage to you, but after you get 22 hits or so. I came in with full health, that could have been bad. Bloody Tears. Yeah, I'll have to confess and say that my favorite version of Bloody Tears is the one from Castlevania Rondo of Blood. This is this is really good too. <laughs> Top watch is probably is better than the knife. A kind of a neat touch too that they made the clock tower the next to last stage in this game instead of the second stage in Castlevania 3 so they're able to make it a lot harder. You really hear the pain, <laughs> your, your Super Nintendo console crying out in pain because of all the lag too. Cross coming up in the next section. What? I thought that gear bounced different. It's probably based on where you are. Okay, I was thinking of that one. Oh, ah, ah, yep. Okay. Oh, there we go, okay. Got me a bit there. Just if I die here, I'll be quick. Pretty cool clip you can do to kind of catch the ring through the floor and avoid having to fight that. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna try to kill this one. Just whipping one of the rings and 
that way. All right, made it through eight. Mummy here is the most RNG boss in the game. The pattern you want to see. You get it one cycle if he uh, operates well enough. Hey, old drunk guy, come in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Stage A done, done, done by a really good runner is always a treat to watch. As far as all the really kind of risky and fast uh, climbing techniques, fast way to do this part is just to fall through. How to do that without risking dying? Maybe I should have though. Just I remember these dull hands or whatever a lot better from Castlevania 3. <laughs> Speed tech here is to actually kill some of these bats to cut down on leg from the crumbly bridge. B1, not too bad. B2 is, I consider to be probably the hardest section of the game. If you fall off the stairs, you're dead. Okay, that's the hardest climbing in the game. And we actually have a cross for uh, the final bosses. <laughs> There's some very cool tech for Slogra here to uh, kind of hit, hit him with multiple crosses at the same time when he's falling. <laughs> Ah! 
Had a horrible, horrible pattern there too with the number of times he did that instant beak charge. Nah, that's a shame. We'll have a bit of a shot to beat the game in under an hour or two, which would be pretty sweet. If I hadn't gotten hit so many times during the easier part of the slugger fight, I might have made it through there. It's really, really dangerous when he loses his spear because he can get that instant beat. <laughs> Basically jump instantly to not get hit. <laughs> That's kind of disappointed I don't have a cross for death, but uh Field between fights. Getting stuff. Or not, there's a there's a secret room, a pretty well known secret room right before Dracula. You can use to get full power. Yeah, I, I, I'm with Wudge there. If I had the opportunity to have a personal uh, dinosaur bodyguard, I would certainly take it. I'm just going to play this safe here as far as hiding out in the corner here until death gives me... Seer <laughs> to uh, block his sights. Probably not going to sub hour, but uh, close at least. Got the jump. Normally you walk into the uh, center of the room, but uh, save a tiny amount of time there by jumping right as the stuff changes. I enjoy your NES games, yes. So what about the tip of the moon there? <laughs> yes, there's that secret there you can use to get Simon to full power before Dracula. Kind of a bad pattern for Drac actually to have him spawn at the far edge of the screen like this. Four spawns, he's on top of you.
Get the snack phase better. Yes, just gives you get, if you can whip that little orb, he shoots out that dude. <laughs> flew away without a cure the first time. Definitely one of the easier Dracula fights in the, overall in the series. Doesn't have a second farm and she will get healed in the middle of the fight. If you, if you don't miss the uh, balls like that. She buzz buffering here to hit by the lightning. Lightning I think will kill me actually at this health. <laughs> I'll get Simon's theme back to the last phase of the drag fight. That should... Alright! Um, dang, if I hadn't... if Slagra hadn't gotten me, this probably would have cut the hour. <laughs> yeah, it was only two deaths, I think? Obviously, I played extremely safe because I'm I don't actually speedrun this game, and I also haven't played it in quite a while. But uh, it's fun. <laughs> All right, so 101 something. I started my timer right. Nice, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, again. Busted this game out tonight in order to pay tribute to uh, Furious Paul, who's, who's a, a guy who ran this game very, very seriously uh, from 2013 or 14 to 2017, and uh, sadly passed away about two weeks ago from uh, heart valve problems. I had the privilege of commentating for some of Paul's uh, GDQ runs of this game. But yeah, oh yeah, and he, he he also is known as Joanna or Joanna, which uh, is the name of his World of Warcraft character. Like in addition to speedrunning Castlevania games, he was also uh, very much in the World of Warcraft scene. And I know uh, made leveling guides for World of Warcraft Classic that are uh, pretty well regarded. <laughs> Like I, th I, I think more people probably, honestly, probably know Paul through WoW instead of Castlevania, but I know him from Castlevania. I love Castlevania. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he did a lot, he did very long streams very late at night in a lot of cases, and they were just so chill, too. Like he, he wasn't, he, he wasn't like he was micless or uh, anything, but... Uh, he always had his camera on, showing him and sitting in one of the comfiest chairs you'll ever see. It's sort of like a, like a gray recliner, basically, and uh, sitting in a comfy chair, six, seven, eight hours running this game, or just grinding practice on specific rooms and stuff. Oh, hi, Poexel, by the way. Nice name you got there. <laughs> To pull up uh, one of its GDQ friends to Swift Joke. Yeah, this was. If anyone actually wants to see 
One of Paul's performances, too. That's a pretty solid one, too. That was a race he did with uh, Joe D'Amelio back in 2017 that was on couch for. <laughs> that was Paul's last GDQ run, too, because, yeah, because it was 2017 was when he retired from Castlevania and went full time on World of Warcraft. Ah, uh, thanks. Ah, uh, that's nice. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice thing to Tranquil Mills. <laughs> yeah, I know for people that are into World of Warcraft, um, uh, let's see. This is, this is, yeah, he, he renamed his Twitch channel from Furious Paul to Joanna after going into World of Warcraft, but I believe, yeah, I think his family has his, uh, speed run of World of Warcraft on continuous play on his Twitch channel. Eternal Candle, basically. Let's touch. That was a that was a successful evening, I would say. Got a uh, pretty solid PB in Final Fantasy Legend. Uh, I did a commentary practice run of Le FF Legend, and then a uh, casual speed run of Super Castlevania 4. I've never actually run a timer while playing this game before, but it would not surprise me if this is the fastest I've ever beaten this game, too, because, I mean, I played very, very slowly and cautiously, but I, I, lo I lost my su sub weapon a few times, too, and I had to claim it, but. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll, re I'll do actually try to do better at this, because I, I, at some point I do want to actually get a better time at. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2, which is the other non-RPG game, well, the non-RPG game I've taken seriously in the past, and pick up another platformer game. This is one I've thought of a few times. Sub one hour grind. Well, sub one hour grind should just mean playing, doing another run and dying less. 